What's up, sons? It's Blind Guard with Son of Attack once again, and I got my hands on Shadow of the Tomb Raider slightly early thanks to their pay to get early. I don't think I like that. That being said, wanting to get all of the benchmark numbers out as quickly as possible for y'all, I did pay the expansion price or the digital deluxe edition price and got to testing a couple nights ago a lot of it was recorded live and you can actually watch that testing up there that's on the rx 570 we also threw a gtx 1063 gig in the rig and did some additional testing after the live stream and we have all those numbers coming up for you right after this okay so to start things off the test bench, as most of you are probably curious about, has been upgraded. We are on an i7-8700K. We worked on some cooling and overclocking and voltages and such to put it at 4.8 gigahertz at 1.25 volts. And around there, it stays pretty cool with that Noctua NHD15 cooler, which you can check all the parts out in the description below with. We have it teamed up with 16 gigabytes of Corsair Dominator Platinum clocked at 3200 megahertz and all running on an SSD. So there you go, pretty much the standard highest frame rate possible per GPU supposedly with this processor. If you disagree, of course, let me know in the comment section. I have found some outliers that do run better on the 2700X, but we'll go over that in another video. Hopping right into the benchmarks, let's take a look at the GTX 1063 GB versus the RX 574 GB. Last time in Strange Brigade, the RX 574 GB beat out the green team, which you can check that video out up here. But in this case, the GTX 1063 GB had 0.1% mins of 85 FPS with 1% mins of 89 FPS and an average of 108. While the RX 570 showed to be a little bit weaker with 0.1% mins of 74, 1% mins of 80 FPS, and an average of 108. This shows exactly why it's important to check your 1% and 0.1% mins for true performance. As their average FPS does match up, it's quite apparent that the GTX 1063 GB is maintaining a better frame rate overall in this particular case. Now, because we didn't really have the time to go through and test the GTX 1063 GB in DX11 and DX12, all of these tests were done in DX12. I did test DX11 for the RX 574 GB. I started out with the RX 574 GB primarily because I, I figured it would be the one that would be underperforming out of the two just from my previous experience with these types of titles. <clears throat> NVIDIA way it's meant to be played. That being said, we did take a look at both DX11 and DX12, and surprisingly, this is the first title in a long time I've seen this much of a performance gain from DX12, actually any performance gain in DX12. And what you saw here was DX11 had 0.1% mins of 65, with 1% mins of 67, and an average of 108. Bump over to DX12 and you have 0.1% mins of 74 with 1% mins of 80 and average of 108. That is between an 8 and 10% increase in frame rate. However, note something interesting here. The gap between the 0.1% mins and the 1% mins is actually higher on the DX12. And what that tells me is that you would technically have a smoother frame rate, albeit with less frames, on DX11. What you're seeing is that, that notorious DX12 hitching. Now, of course, some of that can be cleaned up with something like G-Sync or FreeSync, but not to the extent that we would really like to see. I'd almost say that even while you are getting an 8 to 10% increase in FPS overall, it might still actually play better and feel better in DirectX 12. Of course, provided you are trying to turn on RTX, which requires, to my knowledge, apparently DX 12. That's an interesting one too. We will obviously have to have you guys come back for the RTX performance 
numbers and we'll be doing that here shortly whenever we get the RTX 2080 in. That being said, we did go ahead and take a look at the effect. All of the settings, individual graphic settings, affect frame rate and I'll show you guys right here. As you can see, if you want to change your FPS or improve it, you're going to want to take a look at the following settings. The percent change basically means that if you were at 100 FPS and you want to be at 120 FPS, you would essentially look for a percent change of 20%. And that's how that would add up. Of course, knocking it down to 60, so on and so forth, you'll have to just do the math out yourself. But the biggest gain is going to be from anti-aliasing where you can get a 51% change in FPS, while on shadow quality comes in second with a 20% change in FPS. HBAO Plus on NVIDIA, I didn't actually test. I did test it on, of course, the Radeon card because that's where I figured we would see the biggest performance difference. And on that, we saw a 13% change in FPS. BTAO was 11% change in FPS. Motion Blur, 12%. Screen Space Reflections, 10%. And Depth of Field, 4%. Overall, if you guys are looking for a good 1080p experience, I think you can settle with a GTX 1063 GB or RX 574 GB, provided you're willing to give up basics like anti-aliasing and shadow quality. If you're not willing to give those up, you will be under a 60 FPS gaming experience and you might want to consider bumping up to a higher tier GPU. We'll be taking a look at the higher tier GPUs later so we can also compare them against the ray tracing functionality and so on. I don't really want to get ahead of myself on that one. So this is the $200 PC performance budget performance for Shadow of the Tomb Raider and I think it's a very effective one. The performance analysis as far as percent change in FPS by setting actually will translate across of course the higher end or higher tier cards. And the way we actually average those out is we try it on an APU, a NVIDIA GPU, and an AMD GPU, and then we average those three together and to get those change in FPS. It's not always 100%, but if I do notice there being something like one of the settings affecting one specifically negatively, then I mention it like I did today with the HBAO Plus. If you think there's any tweaks or anything that could be added to this PC performance analysis for any of my games, let me know in the comment section below. I appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next Tuesday.